so that no lines, one direction, two directions, three directions, four or more. Okay. Now, let's shift down here and see how that applies. So what I've done is I've created two little drawings of some fruit and the one on the left I'm going to do in pencil and then the one on the right I'm going to do cross hatching. Okay. First thing we want to do I would recommend is that you take a pencil and you map it out. Mapping simply means that you're going to use some lines to guide you as you begin adding your shadows. So if you look back at the unit that we did on cross contours that's actually a method of mapping. So I'm going to go ahead and put the same light source on each one of these. So here we go. If I put in my cross contour lines this way, and I don't need a ton, I just need a few, so that we could see what's going on. And I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Remember that cross contour lines are guidelines, so keep them relatively light so that you can erase them, erase them when you when we're done with them. Okay. Now, if my light source is coming here, right here, I know that this area right here is going to be hot. So my highlight is probably going to fall right about here. So I'm going to use my cross contour lines to help me. I can label that zero because that is my brightest value, right? So I want that to be hot. I don't want any lines in there, which means that this little area behind it is going to be a one. This is going to be one. As the lines go this way, it's going to get darker. So we can be here at a two, three, four, and then if we want to do a reflective light, we'll go back to three here. Also, because these lines are going in this direction, we know that the underside is also going to be dark. So we know that that underside is going to be a four. And if we decide to put in a cast shadow, we know that this will be four, and it's going to go that way, two, three, possibly a two. Okay. So, let's kind of do the same thing on the other side. Again, this is called mapping. So, one, zero, one, two, three, four, three. That's your reflective highlight. So, it's not going to be your darkest point. Four. Let's go this way, go to three, possibly two. Okay. So, on the one on the left, I'm going to go ahead and shade it. I'm going to get my eraser. I'm going to get rid of this little line in here. And I'm just going to use a number two pencil. And I'm going to use some scratch paper so that I don't smudge everything. So, I'm going to use the side of the lid. Start off with a light value. And I'm going to speed this part up because you guys already know how to shade with a regular pencil. So that's not my big concern. My big concern is what you do when you get to the cross hatching. How do we do this over here using cross hatching? Well, it's the same as what we did up on the top. So when we look at the scale, let me back this up for a minute. When we look at the scale here, we have these things here. So zero is blank. One would be here, two here, three here, four here, three here, and then four here, out going that way okay so let's go ahead and do this 
first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and outline this area here so we could actually see these and I'm not going to outline the guidelines all I'm going to outline is the outer object now I'm going to use my guidelines to help me with the cross hatching so I know that this is a one zero one so when I put in my first layer I'm going to use only one direction notice just like before I'm not overly concerned about the stopping points okay I'm not trying to start here and end exactly there I want my lines to be loose and I'm using my whole arm to keep them relatively parallel to each other now I can actually continue these lines in this direction for this basic demo um, if I want to do a more advanced, um, that would have to be a separate video. But for this basic demo, I'm going to ahead, gonna go ahead and put in a 1 in one direction, pretty much all the way across. But I want to vary the lines. When I come to this side, I'm still going to come in this direction. Still keeping with the first layer. I'm still working on just the first layer. So I'm going to keep these lines more or less in the same direction. For the stem, I know that I can start here and go in one direction first and I'm changing the angle just for the sake of breaking it up. Cut. So we have our first layer. Now just so you can see it better I'm going to go ahead and darken out the pencil line. Approximately here is where it's going to start to get darker. So when I start doing my second layer, I'm not going to start it over here. I'm actually going to start it in this area here. And I'm roughly going to end it about there. And I want to go at about a 90 degree from the first one. Again, keep these lines loose. Don't worry about trying to make every line the same length. Just really focus on the angle. So it looks like now this is darker than this and this is darker than that. So that's the same thing as we did here. Now again using my pencil I'm going to show you more or less where the third layer is going to stop and about here because I want that reflective light. I'm not doing this part yet. I'll do that separate. So for my third layer I'm going to go in this direction again. I'm going to keep these lines parallel to themselves, to each other. this down a little bit more this way to make that darker area where it's going underneath bam, bam. and then for the fourth layer which is the darkest one for this demo that's going to be over here somewhere so for that area I want to go horizontal Remember, I'm leaving a little bit of a reflective light on the far right edge 
so that's why I'm not going to take this fourth layer all the way to the end. The thing about cross hatching is that you got to look at it from a distance. Okay, if you look at it from up close, all you're going to see are a bunch of lines. But as you go further and further away, further away, and that's when you actually see the um, the shading. All right, so let's do this inner part. We know that this goes down, so we know that that has to be darker. So I'm going to go ahead and put in. I'm going to start off with two layers and see if it's dark enough. And if it's not dark enough, then I'll add a third layer. I'm going to leave a little bit light here because the light's going to come in through here and hit that wall a little bit. So I'm not going to let that get too dark. And I'm going to go with one more layer, I think. And I'm especially on this side. That should be dark enough there. For the upper part, I need to separate this edge here. So I'm going to go ahead and put in a second layer there and a little bit of a third there. Here, I think two is probably going to be enough. Right. For the cast shadow, I want to go from four to three. So Again, it doesn't matter which direction you start since you're going to be adding multiple layers anyway. So on this first layer, I'm just going to go horizontal. Keeping the lines relatively parallel to each other. For the second layer, I'm going to go vertical. And I want the darkest part to be directly underneath the fruit. As it comes out, it needs to get a little bit lighter. Which means you can space the lines further apart. Okay. For the third layer, I'm going to go at a diagonal. Again, as I come out, I'm going to let those lines get a little bit lighter. By making them shorter or spacing them further apart. And for the deepest, deepest part, I'm going to go ahead and add a fourth layer. Now I'm going to look for anything that I feel needs a little bit more attention. So like right here, I need a little bit more contrast there. So I'm going to add a little bit, a few extra lines. So this is kind of like the editing stage. Right here, looks like I can do a little bit more transition. So I'm gonna add, I'm gonna move my third layer over to the left a little bit more. All right, so now I'm gonna erase all of my guidelines and then take a look at it and see if there's anything else that I wanna change. If you're working with liquid ink, make sure that it is completely dry before you do this step, otherwise you'll smear it. Yeah, that doesn't look too bad. I'm going to go ahead and do some minor adjustments. I think as the stem starts to go inside here, it's probably going to get a little bit darker here. And I still think that this is too even. So I'm just going to extend some of these lines up a little bit more just to widen up this curve a little bit. And then the underside right here, I'm just going to add just a little bit more just to make this part nice and dark 
leaving a little bit of a reflective light right there just to get a nice separation between the cast shadow and the fruit and that's it now as you get more comfortable doing this it becomes easier um, you won't always have to lay in your guidelines uh, but when you're first learning out I would recommend that you go ahead and map it out using guidelines um, in pencil then do your hatching and cross hatching and then remove your guidelines and then you know edit um, anything that you don't like okay hope this helps thanks